Hello and welcome. This is the Nicholas Italia Show. I'm your host, Nicholas Italia. Today we have a very special guest, Zara Carson. Zara, season's greetings. <laughs> season's greetings. Happy New Year to you. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure. And here's where I want to start. You've written a best-selling book, Six Weeks to Happy, The Ultimate Roadmap to Retrain Your Brain for Better Health, Greater Abundance, and Long-Lasting Happiness. And I want to know, before life as a mindset coach, and even could be even before you're a management consultant, what were your limiting beliefs about yourself that you overcame before becoming a coach? Great question. It's actually what started my journey down this whole thing. And I think it was meant to be part of my path. So I was actually born in South Africa during apartheid. So it was uh, obviously a very challenging political climate, racial climate. And, you know, I think when you're exposed to such complex situations at a young age, that you can't process. Um, it's human nature to find an explanation to make sense of your world. And so what I had decided, you know, the things you're exposed to at that age, you know, racism and discrimination and not understanding why people are segregated by, you know, by skin color. And you can't process that stuff because it's not natural. We're not actually born to think of things in those, those ways. We're born to just love we're just born open and loving and i think the story i told myself at a very young age was i'm not enough or i'm not good enough because of my skin color and i caught myself thinking that in my teen years and i was so shocked by the thought and i thought to myself well that's not going to be my story yeah. Not the not good enough is not good enough for me. <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I need to figure out how to move beyond. So I became fascinated with the study of successful people. And there's so many books written on, you know, autobiographies and whatnot on, on what separates, you know, the norm from greatness. And, and I wanted to really understand human behavior and what stops so many people from achieving what they want to in life, whether it's love or better health or a long lasting peace or happiness or even wealth and success. Mm -hmm. And that just became my fascination. So I went down a whole different path. I studied psychology and I have a background in neuroscience and positive psychology. I got certified in mindset coaching, but then I worked as a management consultant for over 25 years at a very high level. I worked with C-level executives and budgets and projects up to 50 million. So like big, big teams. Yeah. And I was fascinated with how to motivate and inspire people. And then through that and my coaching practice and all of my studies, I started to see patterns in the data. Mm. And I thought, this is fascinating. This is, this is what we all need to learn to unlock and, and create some sort of a, a map to navigate through life because we're not given a map you know yeah. we're told to like go to school and get good grades and get a job and maybe start a career then get the family get the house get the car get the kids yeah. you know? knock but them out one by one it's pretty high level like you know we have a lot more training on just how to get a mortgage so why don't we have a set of tools to help us successfully navigate this thing called life. And I started to define one for myself. And once I figured out what that secret sauce was and that magic formula was, I thought, okay, this is what I wanna teach people because this is so powerful and yet it's so simple. If you can just pull all of these little disciplines together and put the data in a, in a way that is easy to process, takes 10 to 20 minutes a day, can be delivered in six weeks, you can, it can be a game changer and you can really shift people's mindsets so they can have a life they dream of. And that became the book and the rewire system and the book six weeks to happy was born. So I'm very excited to be here and share it with you. Yeah. I'm excited to hear it too. I definitely want to, I want to know what the secret sauce is, get, get more of that information. <laughs> so my next question is, and I want to jump around a little bit with the rewire uh, system. So I want to start with the second R, the repeat and rewire. And <laughs> you know, creating daily practices to stay in the zone. What are daily practices that are essential to perform at a high level? Oh, that's a great question. Well, let me take a step back and explain why that's necessary. So if we, the whole idea of this book came from my studies in neuroscience and understanding the brain is not actually static, it's dynamic and therefore changeable, malleable. And 
the brain shows lasting signs of change at the 35 to 42 day period, 42 days, six weeks, six weeks to happy, mm -hmm. right? So I thought, what if I could teach people a set of tools and it is by repetition and I'll, I'll get into a little bit more about the thought and feeling patterns and how that shifts mindset, that sort of secret formula of shifting mindset, because it's more than just affirmations or positive thinking. It's, we all know we've tried it. It doesn't work just like Staring that. Staring myself right? in the mirror. <laughs> I'm a good person. <laughs> yeah. I think that SNL skit ruined it for most people. <laughs> Stuart Smalley, what was that? Uh -huh. I love myself and God darn it, people <laughs> like me. Um, exactly. You know, I think it made it a little flaky and the whole idea of meditation and mindfulness is a little woo-woo to people. I wanted to go just beyond all of that and just understand the science of why we get stuck and the science of how to move beyond and then the tools for how to retrain that. And part of it is incorporating the brain and optimal health because the brain and, and the gut are responsible for all of those happy neurochemicals like mm -hmm. serotonin and dopamine. And so you know, where does happiness live became an interest of mine. So does it, you know, could we, if we could figure out how to express the right cocktails of neurochemicals within mm -hmm. us, would that work? Yeah. It's not yeah. enough. So I became fascinated with like, what are all of the pieces we need in order to really get us there? And so part of it is in order to retrain yourself to a new mindset. So if you think of how you wake up in the day, most of us wake up, you grab a coffee, and then your thoughts for the day start percolating, right? Like mm -hmm. you start thinking about everything you need to accomplish. Do you have enough time? Are you going to have enough energy? Can you get yeah. to that workout? Can you get to that meeting? Are you prepared enough for the day? You know, and then what yeah. are the feelings that start getting paired with those? The feelings of stress and worry, nervousness, you know, and then that creates a physical sensation, a visceral sensation in our body. So, tension in the neck and shoulders starts before we're even aware of it right like yeah. probably right as we're sipping our coffee we're starting to already <laughs> just squeezing up <laughs> tense up for the day your breathing gets tight your chest gets tight you know these are all symptoms of living well or holding stress and tension in your body and so I thought you know what are the tools I can give people so that they can train away from this and the other thing is we are wired we evolved to be really good and at, at survival so we have a built-in stress response called the fight or flight response. I'm sure you've heard of this. And it served us really well in the past. So, you know, we're, we're built in, our brains are actually wired for a negativity bias. And what that means is we are on high alert for danger. Mm -hmm. So back in the day when we lived in the bush and there was a predator nearby, that acted as our stress response acted like a gas pedal. And it gave us the adrenaline we needed to rush off and flee to safety. Yeah. And when we were safe, our brains would then signal our bodies and say, okay, there's no more threat. You can return back to your state of calm. But do you think we're doing that today? I think most of us probably live with an underlying level of stress yeah. that we're yes. either not acknowledging or too afraid to acknowledge. <laughs> yeah, and I think during this whole bizarre pandemic we've all been facing for the last almost two years now, um, we couldn't ignore it anymore because most of us would wake up and then you get busy and distracted with the stress and the worry and we, we hit distract or we hit mute somehow and we go off and we get busy. Yeah. Well, during COVID, we, that volume just got turned up and most yeah. of us didn't know how to dial it down. Or we did with wine and other things. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, mm -hmm. you know, we went through a little unhealthy spiral before we realized, oh my God, we need some coping mechanisms here. This is not going to yeah. work long term. And so... That is also, you know, part of the science of why this is important and why starting the day off in the right mindset, starting with the right tools. So you asked, you know, what, what tools would I use as a daily practice? Well, the first thing is to start your day off intentionally. So rather than starting on autopilot, so if we are 5% conscious mind, 95% subconscious, all of our thoughts and feelings and memories and beliefs are all housed in the subconscious. So we wake up in the morning and we think we're living fully and powerfully on the 100%, but we're actually operating only in the 5%. Yeah. And so when you go on autopilot is when you start having those thoughts and feelings of worry. And then the behaviors that go with that have to align with thoughts of stress and worry. Now, if you wake up and you learn the tools to remove those obstacles, 
understand what are the underlying subconscious reasons, you know, what are the causes of your stress and worry at a deeper level, pick those up and remove them, which is what this book teaches you. Then you can wake up and you can choose to start your day peacefully. Mm. And if you're peaceful, your focus and productivity is already 10 times boosted. Your immune system is boosted. Your brain processing power is faster just by learning how to quiet the mind. So however you choose to do that, meditation is not for everyone. Like sitting quietly actually wasn't for me. I had to visualize. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some people can't do it. And I've heard this from a lot of people, especially if you were raised with a particular faith, you know, it's really, it's not faith-based. The reason it's important to quiet the mind is because we need to stop the stress. We need to retrain back to calm so that we can focus and think clearly. And from that space, you can create some things and some, some real goals that you can achieve. And so that's what I set out to do. And then learning how to stay in that state of flow is also important throughout the day. And we can talk a bit about that a little bit later as well. Yeah, I'm, I'm super curious to get into that. And that's such a good point that, uh, you know, there's different ways to achieve the same quietness and calmness. I definitely relate to the visualization thing. I think that it definitely is one of the most productive things that I am able to actually sit and, and sit with and do and see things. I want right. to talk about, I'm curious about the portion of, we all shouldn't say we all, many of us live with this level of stress, whether it's anxiety, depression, low self-esteem, even like negative self-talk. Mm -hmm. I want to know if you have some fundamental steps as to how to break the cycle, you know, even with your your belief of like not enoughness, like what are yeah. the steps to take to get rid of all of that junk so I can actually start finding that, you know, peace in my day to move forward? Well, that's a really great question. And it's, you know, one of the things that interested me the most is during my, you know, working in, in management consulting, it doesn't matter if it was, you know, a lower level operator or a senior manager or even a CEO these themes, these five themes, I, I figured out that the limiting beliefs that plague most people actually fall into one of five buckets. Oh, wow. And I, I won't have time to go through all five, but I'll mention a couple. I mentioned mine already was the not enough. And what I realized was it didn't matter who you were speaking to in the, in the hierarchy. Everyone has some flavor of it. Every single person, even if you've managed to uh, accomplish great career success, maybe in your personal life, there's still that I'm not lovable or I'm not enough or, you know, some version of that playing out in other areas of your life. And so I thought, you know, in the positive psychology world, how you process your mental and emotional patterns is you have to have some awareness about it. If you can name it, then you have power over it. If you can't name it and you feel it and you just ignore it, then it has power over you and it's running the show. It's driving your car, yeah. mm -hmm. you know, rather than being a passenger, you want the tools to get into the front seat and be able to drive your own car to your own destination. And so that's what this teaches. So the not enough thing, for example, it can, it can sound like so many different things. I'm not educated enough to create that type of wealth. I, I don't have the resources I need to accomplish that sort of goal or to start this business um you know i'm not smart enough or tall enough or pretty enough or thin enough or whatever this or that and mm -hmm. right and it stops us in so many places in our lives whether that's finding deep love and being in a healthy relationship whether that's goals in career or a business or in, in starting your own business or whether that's creating wealth or achieving that level of health and fitness that you need so the first step is understanding what your patterns are. And so in this book, what I've done is I've outlined all five and given lots of different variations of how it can show up in your life. So we can take another example. Uh, let's say, uh, let's say I'm not safe. Like I don't feel safe. I feel like I'm on my own in this world or I don't have the support I need. Well, if you have a subconscious fear that you're not feeling safe, it doesn't show up like that because again, it's in your subconscious. It's in that 95% yeah. below the surface, like an iceberg is, yeah. right? We only see the top 10% and the rest is below, below the water. So we're not unlike that. And so if it's operating in your subconscious, how does it play out if you have this fear of I'm not feeling safe? Well, how it would play out, for example, is you'd be risk averse. Right. So in business and creating wealth, you have to take some risk. If you're going to make an investment, 
you have to also invest the fact that you might lose it. You have to take the risk yeah. you might lose it. Mm -hmm. And also, you know, what the positive outcome could be that you could actually gain something so much more. And so how does that play out in your love relationships? Well, if you're not feeling safe, then you're going to put up barriers with the person that you're with. You're going to not let them in because again, we are wired for survival. We're not actually wired. Our very nature is actually counterproductive happiness or success. Yeah. It's very attached to survival and survival sometimes means we protect ourselves, not mm -hmm. in all, always the healthiest way. So learning how to unravel that, learning how to recognize those patterns is, is the first step because once you see it, you can't unsee it about yourself. Yeah. You know, once you recognize, oh my God, where did that behavior come from? That was a belief that came from like way, way long ago before I even had control over my thoughts and my feelings. Mm -hmm. And why is it running the show now? And so the next time it shows up, you actually have choice versus mm -hmm. just going on autopilot and letting that sort of strategy play out. And it's really important. I can sort of, do you want me to describe how it shows up? Like how it actually shows oh, up? Oh yeah, like, yeah, okay. absolutely. <laughs> So like I said, we're 5% conscious mind, 95% subconscious. So before the age of seven, we are pure unconscious mind. We are 100% born into this world whole and open and mm -hmm. conscious. And around the age of six or seven, we start to develop a critical faculty. And that's our conscious mind that starts to develop. So anything that we heard before that, and I mean anything in your environment, because remember, we're 100% sponge at that time. It didn't matter if it was your, your father's belief or your uncle said something in the next room or the TV program showed you an example of something. Let's say it was a money belief. Mm -hmm. uh, money doesn't grow on trees or struggle is the meaning of life. I know many of us have heard that one, right? You have to work hard to get anything you really want in life. Yep. Oh, sure, mm -hmm. you do have to work hard. You know, there's a measure of, not not nearly killing yourself in doing it versus yeah. working smarter, not harder, you mm -hmm. know, that you can learn. But if your underlying belief is struggle is the meaning of life and wealth is hard to accumulate, well, you can learn a hundred wealth strategies and chances are you probably won't accumulate wealth or you will and you'll lose it. Yeah. Because you don't believe you can have it. Mm -hmm. Now you remove that belief, which is what I can do with people and what the book will show you to do. And then you learn a hundred wealth strategies. And I promise you, you come out of that feeling like, wow, I cannot fail. So if you come mm -hmm. out of that knowing, like, what if you wake up with that feeling? Wow, what if you knew you couldn't fail? Then all of a sudden you teach that person a hundred wealth strategies and I guarantee you they will accomplish whatever they need. So that's the, the second step is sort of learning how to unravel it and then rewrite the story mm -hmm. is the third. So we have... 2 million bits of information coming at us every second. The brain, the conscious mind is not capable of processing that much data. So what it does is it slices and dices, it deletes, it distorts, it generalizes a lot of the information. And we only process 134 bits in a second. That then gets quickly categorized and stored as memory in the mental and emotional bodies. So if the memory and the event is incomplete, is it fully accurate? Is it really? Mm. Yeah. It's a slice. It's like one of so many possible interpretations of that event. So if we could go back and reinterpret the event, then we can reevaluate our entire lives and make different choices. And that's powerful. That is powerful. It sounds like if you're able to confront these things head on, you're going to be able to grab them and have more control of it. Because then it's then it's up to you. It's no longer. I love the the idea of that. You know, there is something subconscious. Is if you don't recognize it, it will make your decisions for you. And I think that's that's very true. And I'm curious now that we're kind of getting into like the <laughs> the mindset of dreaming bigger. You know, you cannot fail. What do you? Because I almost think when you train your mind and you get to that level, you've done the work. You fought through the demons or whatever it was those feelings inside of you to overcome what do you train your mind with like the information you bring in what do you consume it's almost like a, a mind diet how do you how do you keep it you know how do you keep that big yeah. big mindset <clears throat> this is a very good question i mean you really have to be uh you have to be regimented you have to be militant about 
how you spend your time and energy and what you expose yourself to. So if you're asking me what I personally do, I mean, I, I want to stay updated on current events, but watching the news is it's triggering. It's yeah. stressful. You know, it's, there's so much sensationalism and negativity and it's designed to be that way. So I can consume the news on my time, by my choice, by my channel. So I don't watch the news anymore. I will choose to engage with the Wall Street Journal or any other publication that I like that I deem a, a good source, a solid yeah. source, an unbiased source. And I'll consume information that way. I'm also careful about who I spend my time with because certain people in your life, it doesn't matter you know, if they were childhood friends or colleagues, and some situations where you're not fully in control of who you're around, except how you choose to engage with them or how little you engage with them. If you can partially remove yourself from a situation, you have to choose positive people around you. you we feel energies. We have four bodies, the spiritual, mental, emotional, and the physical. And so our spiritual is our connection to source or God or energy or the universe. However you want to call it, a quantum energy, it's all fine. Mm -hmm. um, but we feel energies, whether or not we actually address it in our lives. And, and so many people don't. So if you're, yeah. I don't know, in a grocery store or in a lineup and, and someone is angry just a few feet away, you feel that. You feel that in your physical body and you want to repel back. You want to move away from it. The same thing happens in life. If you have someone sort of toxic and stressed all the time and depressive, it's hard to be around, you know, there's a whole concept in positive psychology called emotional contagion, which means a happy person within a mile of you, even your neighbor actually causes you to be statistically happier. Oh, wow. Right. That's wild. So, it's wild. And so the opposite is also true, right? Unhappy and depressed and stressed people are going to make you more stressed. So if you can learn to surround yourself with people that are more elevated in terms of, you know, whether it's thought leadership or their uh, emotional and, and, you know, their temperament, for example, if you like a calm temperament or that have, you know, that sort of happy, joyous, like energetic kind of feeling. Yeah. I like people that are sort of my level and more energetic because <laughs> yeah, yeah. it sort of, it lifts me up a little bit too. If I'm with someone, um, I, I think I'm so much of an empath that if I'm with someone super mellow, it tends to be oh, you're, down. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, so those are definitely some of the things I do to manage my, uh, you know, my ability to stay in the state of flow. And of course, I start my day with quieting the mind and some meditation and some visualization because it just it starts the day off right. If you can start your day off in the zone, then it's so much easier to stay in the zone throughout the day. If you start off and you let yourself go on autopilot and stay stressed, then likely your day will always be stressed. Yeah. That makes a lot, that makes a lot of sense to me. Yeah. You said this, this wonderful, I mean, you said a lot of wonderful things, <laughs> but I am, my question is going to be about flow state because all the books I've read about flow state and how it pertains to high achievers is mm -hmm. almost in this mind mindset of they are able to get to the flow state quicker and yes. thus perform more or perform at a higher level or stay in the flow state longer what have you seen with high achievers and their ability to get in the flow state and how can we mimic some of that how can we get more of that flow state in our lives well that's a great question i mean you know positive psychology talks about a flow state as you know when you're engaged in an activity it has to have the right balance of you feeling relaxed, but you being stimulated and challenged enough that you're just like, oh, this is so juicy. I want to stay yeah. in this. I want to keep doing this. But when you're not actually actively engaged in something, you also want to stay in the right zone, right? You want to have the, the thoughts and the feelings that are having you feel peaceful and good and confident and capable and resourceful. And so um, I talked about this in, a, in, in the book, I think as well. Uh, HeartMath Institute talks about heart coherence and they did an experiment on these DNA strands. So they had three groups of people hold these vials of DNA and they were doing an experiment in thought and feeling and I'll tie it back to the flow state once I, once I explain this. Mm -hmm. um, 
but you'll see it all coming together. So the first group of people were taught to just have a focused thought, just an intention, in other words, focused thought of raveling or unraveling. They could choose the, the DNA strands. The next group of people were taught to focus on a powerful elevated emotion like gratitude or hope or joy or love and just the feeling itself. The third group was given the instruction to focus on the focus thought, unravel or unravel the DNA strands and a powerful elevated emotion. There was no change in the first two groups, but the third group actually managed to change physical matter by thought and feeling alone. Wow. So they actually wow. managed to unravel the DNA strands by 25% just by thought and feeling. So this was the first real piece of evidence that said, you know, we've heard thought is energy. Einstein has talked about it. Tesla has talked about it. So many of the great thought leaders and mm -hmm. of the world have, you know, talked about thought is energy and feelings are magnetic. So what we send out and what we attract back can actually change based on our energy. Mm -hmm. So if we are responsible for how we're processing things and we can be with the right tools, then you can actually start your day off in that state of flow. You get yourself into a mindset where you know you can't fail, where yeah. you know that everything you're visualizing is absolutely 100% possible, where you can be in the best shape of your life, where you can be you thing, not AJ, <laughs> yeah. you, be, <laughs> yeah. you know, where you can have laughter and joy versus the other stuff, you know, that, that had you played for so long and you, you tap into those sources of, of stress and worry, you remove them. And so now you get to wake up and consciously choose your thought and feeling patterns. And you asked earlier about the, um, the six weeks and the repetition and the rewiring yeah. this all begins to rewire the brain and create a new pathway so if you're thinking and feeling you know if you're thinking and feeling the old pattern which is stress worry oh my gosh you know nerve start well how do you how do you think the day is going to go if you're in that mindset yeah you know stressful you, worryful <laughs> worryful yeah. and when you're worryful do you think you can accomplish as much as if you know you're going to get there 100 yeah. percent? probably not Mm -hmm. So if you can start the day in a completely different zone by consciously choosing more powerful feelings, more powerful thoughts of, you know, and start your day with a visualization of everything going well in your day, whatever's coming at you, you have a business meeting, you visualize it going extremely well, you visualize that contract closing, the money coming, the joy and the love and the happiness you deserve, the financial freedom you want. And, and picture it as though you already have it because that's what's going to induce those powerful emotions. Because if you're imagining it as though you don't have it yet, you're also imagining the worry of how to get there and the stress mm -hmm. of how to get there. If you're imagining it and visualizing it as though you've already accomplished it, and here's the secret sauce. Get oh, yes. <laughs> Take notes. Yeah. Get crystal clear, like a really clear visualization of what you're doing in the moment as though you already have it. Mm. And you can ask yourself these questions. You can say, what are you doing in that moment? Like really get a clear visual. Are you turning the key? Have you just walked through your new house out to the balcony of your beach house and you're looking out at the ocean? Now mm. that moment, you can feel it. You can mm. feel, oh, I have chills already. Yeah. I can feel gratitude, you know, rushing through my body. I can feel awe, I can feel wonder. I can feel proud of myself. In that moment where you've already accomplished it, get a really clear visual, auditory and kinesthetic clue. So what are you, what are you seeing? Mm -hmm. What are you hearing and what are you feeling? And get really tight on your visualizations because what that does is it allows you to step into a whole new mindset with thoughts and feelings that are much more powerful than the worried you before. You're creating a new powerful you. And the more you do this and the more you visualize it and the more you daydream it, just daydream it throughout your day. Yeah. It starts to become your new reality until six weeks later, it is your new reality. It's, it's astonishing. Your whole day just goes so much smoother. So it sounds like it really, uh, getting our mornings right, starting our morning off with tr super intentionality about what we want for our lives. But then a layer to that is getting crystal clear on exactly what we want. 
100%. like what we feel, what we see, how we want to be, who we want to be, all has to be crystal clear. And I think that's another part of like doing the digging work of like, what do you actually want? You yes. know, who, who do you want to be? Where do you want to be? And all sorts of things like that. I want to know, let's say, let's say hypothetically, it's never going to happen to any of us. We're not going to have a great morning and then a, find ourselves in the afternoon not feeling as inspired what do you do when you have a day where you're like, I had a great morning, I was super intentional, but somewhere along my day, I'm getting off track and my mind is wandering. I'm starting to like feel those limiting beliefs come in again. Is there like a quick like totally. exercise or tip oh to like gosh. refocus? Absolutely. One of the quickest things you can do, well, first of all, pause and reset. And then the second thing you wanna do is, I'm just gonna write this down because I'm about to explain something in terms of how the brain processes this. Um, and I don't want to lose this thought. So the first thing you want to do is pause and reset. And then you just want to ask yourself, just dial back in and say, how do you want to feel instead? Mm. Because I promise you, nobody's going to respond to that question with, oh, I'd like to keep feeling stressed. <laughs> I want to <laughs> feel terrible. <laughs> <laughs> you know, We're going to say, you know what? I want to feel peaceful, calm, and absolutely certain that I'm about to do something amazing and that it will, you know, I will achieve my goal. So the way the brain works is it's so incredibly intelligent. So I talked a little bit about thought and feeling patterns and I talked about neuroplasticity and creating why it's so important by repetition to create new neurology. Well, the brain is so intelligent then in as little as 10 minutes, it will start to dismantle resources used in an old thinking and feeling pattern and it will send those resources and reallocate them to where they're needed so if you can just remember that you are so powerful you can reset and choose in 10 minutes what are you going to choose to give your power and attention to are you going to yeah. choose to stay stuck or are you going to choose this new pathway which is much more powerful which has you excited and energized and feeling vibrant and you're thriving and really excited about your life again so just pause if you're if you're feeling anxious the other thing you could do is to take six deep breaths slower exhale and what that does is it triggers your natural calming response it triggers your parasympathetic nervous system to signal the brain to tell your body it's okay. It's yeah. okay to be calm now. And it brings you back to calm. And once you're there, you can then say, okay, just pause and reset. How do we want to feel instead? And just get back into the zone. And I understand that some things are hard. There are life events that really can throw you off. And in that moment, it's okay to just pause and stop and take a rest until you can reset again but the more you do it the more practice you have with it the easier it gets because the brain is desired to be designed to be efficient mm. so it's going to take the path of least resistance yeah. so if you're waking up stressed and worried stressed and worried it's going to go oh let's do that because that's what yeah. she always does yeah, yeah let's run with that one mm -hmm. right if you instead wake up and intentionally start your morning off right you're setting the tone for the day and you're saying, no, I'm going to choose. I'm going to, so I think that's what consciousness is, is yeah. having the power to choose versus having your fear run you or your stress run you or whatever else run you and, and, and choosing to be unstuck. You get to wake up and you get to choose instead. No, today I'm going to feel absolutely capable and certain and sure that I'm, you know, I'm going to accomplish. I'm going to be, I, wake up feeling grateful and loved and blessed and know that everything is going to go well in my day. Well, if you're thinking about those things and you're feeling those feelings that go with it, then the actions can't relate to stress. They're going to relate to this powerful version of you that you're stepping into. Yeah. They're going to relate to the thoughts and feelings that elevate you now. So now you're staying in the zone. So the quickest way to get there is how do you want to feel instead? Just pause and reset. The more you do that, the more you're rewiring this pathway. And soon enough, this one will start to fall away. It's very yeah. powerful stuff. Yeah, it's incredibly powerful. Oh, you said so much good stuff. Uh, <laughs> I, I feel like I'm going to be able to remember this because six weeks to happiness and also six breaths. So now I know I can remember these two things if I there you go. retrain, my brain, retrain <laughs> my brain and I can retrain my, my breath when I want to be calmer. And I think uh, it's such a 
great thought to think of, you know, our actions will begin to align with our thoughts yeah. and with our beliefs. And like, I think a, another thing that took me a while to understand and why I think some of the affirmation things didn't always stick is because I could tell myself, you know, you're, you're a powerful person or whatever it may be. But if mm -hmm. I didn't believe it, it wasn't ever going to happen for me. I wasn't ever going to actually become that powerful or leader or whatever it may be. Um, and okay, we're getting into it. This is so good. <laughs> you brought up, you brought up how life events can, you know, twist and turn things. Mm -hmm. I'm curious for you, what has been a life event? It could be a great one, could be a painful one that is cause for the most growth in your life. Great question. Um, well, I'll talk about the moment where I, I, I realized something was missing for me. So I was, I was working as a management consultant. I had a big, big project. I was driving my team very hard. I, I worked at a very high level, so I had very high performing teams that I built. And I was pushing myself so hard, but in that moment, my marriage was failing. You know, I was, I was uber stressed at work. So I was, I, I was just holding so much tension in my body. And there was a particular moment I, I was walking to the office kitchen to get a coffee and I was walking so fast and I was breathing so fast. And I realized, whoa, like, everything I do just feels like I've been sprinting and I realize I feel like I've been running a marathon and it has no finish line and I think it was the beginning I think I prevented myself from having probably a stress related you know health issue or, or a nervous breakdown of some kind and at that moment I ran into my boss and he said I need you in my office for a minute oh, no. <laughs> Mr. CIO said yeah. I need you to go um, and I thought, okay, well, he doesn't usually call me into my, in, into the office unless something is, you know, unraveling and sure enough, our project got put on hold and this happens, you know, this happens as a course of any corporate job, but it, as a human being outside of understanding that cognitively, it also means that all of the work you just did and all of the work mm -hmm. your team just did, is like mm -hmm. out the window. And that's, yep. you know, that's a little hard to process. But I was going through this stressful moment. And uh, so he tells me this happened with my project. And I, I, I mean, I was known for my calm under pressure, cool exterior. And all of a sudden, I just <laughs> burst yeah. into a pile of tears in his office. And we both just looked at each other because I was shocked and he was shocked. And neither of us knew how to respond. And I realized, whoa, something is really wrong. I need to, yeah. I need to just pause and, and reset my life. Like what is happening? And, um, and he said, you know, it's all good. Just take a little time off. You have it now before we have the next project to start and take as much time as you need. And so I did. And I woke up the next day and after a good night's sleep or a few good nights sleep, I woke up and I was having my coffee and I lived by the lake at that time. And, uh, I just said, wow, there has to be more than this. Like, you know, I've done all of the things I was supposed to do. I, I, I accomplished great career success. I have a good amount of money in the bank. I did well for myself. I'm looking after my health. I look good. I feel good. I have a nice circle of friends. I have a nice life. I've traveled. I've had great adventures. Why am I not happy? Why? Like mm -hmm. something's missing. And so it sent me down the path of wanting to unravel why I was so stressed first and understanding how tense I really was inside my body. And I realized, okay. And, you know, I was raised with meditation, but I didn't want to start there. I resisted mm -hmm. it so, so much, partly because it felt flaky and woo, -woo to me even. Mm -hmm. But I just woke up one day and I said, you know, you've got a lot of training and a lot of studies behind mm -hmm. you. And you've read yeah. all the positive psychology and happiness books, the studies of success. You may as well just try a couple of these tools and then <laughs> yeah. see how they work. And uh, I didn't know where to start. So I just said exactly the tool I just gave you. I said, a little voice actually said inside me, how do you want to feel instead? Mm. And I just like, oh, it's just the biggest exhale. I just said, oh my God, I just want to feel peaceful and I want to feel calm and I want to feel happy. 
And that's yeah. all I did. I would just wake up, I would have my coffee and I would just focus on those three feelings. And then that just sort of morphed into like a visualization of how I want my life to go. Once I started feeling better, literally within a couple of weeks, and it sort of just expanded naturally into this visualization of like seeing my body in perfect health and then imagining my relationships and my life and these amazing little moments of travel and friendship and joy and laughter and financial freedom. And, and soon enough, those things just started popping into my life. And I thought, whoa. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And then I set down the path of understanding all of the science so that I could teach other people how to do it for themselves. And so that's what I built into this book. And, and that's what I poured my heart and soul into. So I, I really hope that it's connecting with people and they'll find some joy and, and find some bliss and find their success finally, because they're, such, they're just such small things, even tapping into you know, those old subconscious fears and patterns that have us stuck you don't necessarily need to go through a, a painful structure and, and therapy for years. If you can just name it and see your patterns, you can step outside of it. And that's powerful enough to give you a really good start to remove that obstacle and remove that barrier, no matter what it is, whether it's joy or freedom or love or health, but you can actually start the road to success. And that's, that's how it started for me. I love it. I think, yeah, I think, it's so relatable too, because I can't tell you how many times and I'm sure many of us have felt the same way where we work, work, work so hard. And then when mm -hmm. we get that second to breathe, it's like, wow, a, a lot of time just passed, you know, and you know, these feelings that are arising and I've, I've even felt like guilt, you know, I'm taking one day off, things like that. Those are, sure. those moments are the moments where I'm like the same, same sort of epiphany of like, there is more to this. And if I can, as you're saying, build the clarity for it. Like we can chase them. And I think another yes. big point of yours is like, it is obtainable. Like these things that we desire are in our minds for a reason. It's because they exist and they can happen for us. Yes. I think that's such a, such a wonderful and important thing to be aware of and to double down on uh, your experience. Tell me if this is correct. This is what I got. One of your goals is to impact 10 million people <laughs> or over 10 million children to live happier healthier and with a sense oh, of fulfillment gosh. what's yes. this goal about tell me well i appreciate that it might seem a lofty goal to most people and it is i mean but i never shied away from going after big things in my life and anyone that knows me can tell you i'm definitely a take action person and if i if i do something and set my mind to something i'll, I'll just figure out how to get it done um but the the the, well, the 10 million kids is really, imagine, imagine, you know, the rest of us in our adult life in our 40s or 30s, 40s, 50s, where we, we took us 20 or 30 years to unpack some of these pieces, right? And to learn how to find balance or learn how to manage our money or learn how to find love and be in a healthy relationship and learn how to stop sabotaging ourselves. And I thought, what if we could teach this at a young age? Because these are critical life skills that we really should be learning in school. And why aren't we? Mm -hmm. And I thought, how different would the world be if people were less stressed, <laughs> more yeah. peaceful, more able to accomplish what they set out to do? I mean, the world would just shift. And if you, you know, by 2050, that we're predicting that the population of the earth will be at 10 billion people. So this will be a fraction of that, yeah. but it just takes a fraction to completely shift energies. We talked about emotional contagion earlier, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you have 10 stressed and angry people around you, and now you have seven peaceful, happy, and fully accomplished ones, where do you think you're going to lean to? And where do you think the rest of the world leans to? And then that just creates a bigger community and a bigger community. And, and then we'll all be doing better. I think that would be a great place to live. And, you know, I think being able to teach this to children is so powerful. And I have been able to do that in some, in some nonprofits that I work with. And that's, they love it. It's so exciting for them because nobody's talking about it. Yeah, you know? that's a great point. You work with the Steve and I'm, let's see if I get it. Steve Marjorie Harvey Foundation. Did I nail that? Yeah, Did I get that all right? You know, Steve Harvey, <laughs> the actor, comedian. He is yeah, the, yeah. 
Yeah, so it's his and his wife is Marjorie. So Stephen Marjorie Harvey Foundation. They have a boys club and they have a girls um, foundation. The girls one is called Girls Who Rule the World. And I was invited in to do a full workshop. I got a half a day with them, just me. Nice. And I thought, what am I going to do with them for three hours? And I said, okay, I'm going to do, I'm going to teach them all of these techniques, but I'm Black Panther had just come out. So it was like the whole superhero motif was out and everyone was excited about the movie. And I thought I'm going to use a superhero metaphor and I'm going to do a superhero training camp. And it, I didn't even realize as I started going down that path, what a great metaphor it really was. Because if you imagine every superhero movie, there's, you know, there's the, the them discovering their power, their inner power, okay. in other mm-hmm. words, or their superpower, and they're all different. And so are we. And then there's a moment of defeat, you know, where life knocks them down. And they have to go inwards and figure out how to pull themselves back up, how to find that courage, how to find the conviction, how to find the resources they need to get it done. And they come out stronger than ever. So it was just this really cool um, day that we had with them. And they were so excited to hear about this. And these were girls. So with the Honey Shan Foundation, I worked with kids that were eight to 18. These were girls that were 13 to 18, 11 to 18. And I, I wasn't going to talk about neuroscience that much because I thought it would be too up here for them, like too science-y and too mm-hmm. data-y. And, um, every time I mentioned any little thing about how the brain works, they just all leaned in. And I mm. said, okay, well, let's just go there. <laughs> yeah. And so I would talk to them about emotional resilience and how we process emotions and how we process events and the stories we tell ourselves and how we can change that. And oh my God, we just had the most amazing day where they learned all of these great tools. And you could see the energy in that room from, you know, a bunch of quiet and stressed and introverted kids at the beginning, fully alive and energized at the end of it. I mean, if that's not rewarding, I don't know what is. It was, it was a beautiful experience. Yeah, that's incredible. And I think that's such a, such an important thing that uh, many of us adults are are trying to navigate as well as like, how do we instill that power into the youths as they're growing? Because Mm -hmm. it's so fascinating to me as I've grown into adulthood, realizing how much more knowledge can be passed down to the younger generation. If only we just talk to them, you know, if only we just build a relationship with the youth to let them know, Hey, you don't have to live in this stress like we did for the 30 years before we tackled it or whatever it may be. So it's so important. And add to that social media, oh my God, that <laughs> level of that level alone of it's like an it's a channel for external validation that can be so dangerous mm. to a young developing mind. And I'm so grateful we didn't well, I didn't have that as much growing up. You know, I got to grow up and make mistakes and not have it publicized. I got to grow up and just not be filmed. A mm-hmm. right? Yeah. Like, wow, what's it like today for a kid to grow up and have all of that stuff published with or without your approval or, you know, and then this addiction to needing likes and it's so bad for the ego development. Oh my gosh. So if there was a healthy way to manage that and to teach kids a healthy way to engage with social media without internalizing, mm-hmm. you know, that, that need for approval, because that can, that can be really dangerous moving forward. Yeah. But I'm glad we didn't have to do that. So yes, being able to give them the tools to be able to feel their own intuition. And so when they do engage with something like that, they can say, does this feel good or bad for me? Yeah. You know, just that awareness, just that sense of intuition of saying, you know what, this, this doesn't actually work for me today. I'm not going to engage with it now. Or maybe I'll give it 20 minutes tonight or five minutes later, but yeah, this is not going to throw my day. This is not going to make me feel bad. This is not going to knock my confidence. You know, I'm going to choose to be something instead i'm going to choose to be proud of myself i'm going to choose to be beautiful and choose to be resourceful and choose to be smart and bright and capable and you know that's a whole different game changer you know yeah it absolutely is and if you grew up with that mindset for 10 15 years by the time you're in adulthood that's that's what we wanted that's the pathway we originally wanted to be efficient so that'd be that'd be so good zara we're moving into the final question of the podcast, but before we do, I just want to say thank you for your time. Thank you for coming on. You got me pumped up. I'm inspired <laughs> and I'm thankful that you made the rewire system because I, 
I do think, and if anything, 2020 and the pandemic has shown a light as to how valuable this is and how needed it is for yeah. us to do the reflection work. And, and I 100% agree, like this isn't a, a thing that only certain people can have this mindset. It's, it's meant for everyone to be empowered and to like love themselves and believe in themselves. And you're giving a tangible Absolutely. tool for people to do that. So I really appreciate that. I appreciate the work you're doing. And I love oh. your big goal of 10 million children. I think that's awesome. <laughs> oh, thank you so much for having me on your show. It's been such a pleasure speaking with you. And, and you know, I invite your audience to please like start your journey today. All it takes is 18 strategies, 10 minutes a day and six weeks and your life will change forever. You want better health, you want more joy, you want more wealth, you want love and family, get everything you want, get the life you dream of. It's not too late, you can start anytime. Just go to sixweekstohappy.com and I invite you to do that today. Don't wait, life is too short. Absolutely, and that'll be in the show notes too. So <laughs> here we go. The final question of the podcast is, what does it mean to live a fulfilling life? Hmm. I think, you know, we did talk about it's not a one size fits all. What you need and what makes you happy is going to be different than your friend or your sibling or your parent. But I think overall, if I speak in a general sense, we all need to find that unique formula of how we spend our time that works for us. You know, that perfect combination of quiet time, restoring your energy versus expending it out. But I think for me, a fulfilling life is, you know, it has to have some form of looking after your physical health, obviously, but also being able to wake up and consciously choose to be in the right and thought feeling state where you're really like in that state of flow where you wake up knowing you are flourishing, you are excited about your life, you are thriving, and then you know you can't fail. For me, it's about waking up feeling loving and deserving and capable of achieving absolutely anything and then just being able to to stay in that state and and accomplish anything I want for me a fulfilling life is you know being able to connect with people and understand that that my energy and their energy flows with each other and so we can all help each other be better and uplift the planet then this would be a much much better place and so just my engaging with it gives me so much joy and a, and a really a deep sense of inner fulfillment and so so that's definitely my my sole mission is that so it has to have a number of different parts you know physical health and fitness and mental and emotional health and well-being feeling really connected to myself to source to all things and then being engaged in making the world a better place that's fulfilling for me And everyone has to find their own different formula, but um, I assure you, it has to something to do. Here's the interesting thing I found with with that meaning and purpose question, because so many people struggle with, you know, do you have to start a nonprofit? Do you have to do something? (laughs) It's not for everyone. And what I came to understand was how we're meant to give back has something, has a specific relation to our unique set of strengths and talents. And so if what makes you special is the gift you're meant to give back to the world, Mm -hmm. I mean, how beautiful is that? You 100% were brought here to bring this to the world and you are 100% uniquely gifted to do that. So that doesn't make you feel connected to everything around you and bring you joy. I, I already feel a change in my body as I'm talking about it. Yeah. I'm sure that you are as well, because I can see it on your face. Right, <laughs> right? That's true. Yeah. If we are uniquely gifted to bring something to this world, then it gives back to us. And, and that's the, you know, it's sort of the interconnectedness of all things. Man, that makes I love it. Living. Yeah. I love that. That's, that's very true and very good. Zara, where can people find you on the internet? How can they connect with you? Uh, you can go to getzen.com, that's G-E-T-Z-E-N-D.com, or just go to sixweekstohappy.com. You can find the book or the Get Zen app or any of our coaching programs and just stay in touch, sign up for the newsletter and stay in touch on the latest and greatest. And I just, I invite you to do that and just want to see you all thriving and live the best quality of life you can. Awesome. And all of those links will be in the show notes. Be sure to do them. Go say hi. Zara, thank you so much for being on the show. I'll see you. Thank you. Bye.